Hey guys, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, before I get started, i am just uh, poured up, this is one of my American Blonde um, wheat beers. Uh, it's, I think I bottled it at the end of January, right at the end, so it's probably um, about two and a half months old now. But um, yeah, still going strong. You can see it's got a, it's holding the head very well. Wow, still tasting really good. Yeah, very happy with that. Mm. But the uh, main thing I wanted to talk about today um, was just a little update on my uh, 10 litre mini pressure barrel. So I'll just uh, flip the camera around and I'll show you what's happening. Okay, so this is the uh, mini pressure barrel that um, you would have seen in my last video that I'd uh, filled up with the Cascade Red IPA. Um, so it's been in here for five days. I, I put it in here last Friday. It's Wednesday today. Um, it's been sitting in the fermentation chamber, and I've put, been putting ice packs in there to keep the temperature down. Um, so yep, so that's been going well. The, the barrel's nice and tight, um, but I have made quite a major, well for me major. I'm, I'm not too uh, up on these things. I've made a major change to the barrel. Um, shortly after I posted up the last video, in fact that same afternoon, um, I decided I would try and fit a, um, a pressure gauge to the barrel. I'd seen someone online had done it to a, um, a pressure barrel. So I thought, yep. So I was scouring around on the internet and I found the, it's a 0 to 15 PSI um, pressure gauge here. So that was cool, I, I bought that, um, but the problem I then had was trying to connect it to the um, pressure barrel. I didn't want to just, this this has got a very short thread on the pressure gauge, so I didn't want to put it straight through the barrel, uh, especially when I needed washers and things on it. So um, I found another place not too far away from me that had um, stainless steel um, BSP fittings. This is a BSP um, uh, thread on here, which is, I think it stands for British Standard Pipe or something like that. Um, so anyway, I found this place, uh, showed the, the guy some pictures of what I wanted to do, and we went out the back into the warehouse and had a rummage around, and I ended up getting um, a few bits. So I've got this um, quarter-inch uh, socket. It's uh, it's hollow right the way through, so I've got the gauge screwed into the top with some uh, thread tape. Um, then underneath, um, from the inside of the barrel, I put through a quarter inch to three eighth inch uh, hex nipple. So that that's got like a hex nut sort of built into it. So that comes from underneath, and that's there's a metal washer. Uh, between the hex nipple and the um, container underneath. So that screws straight in pretty much the same as the air pressure gauge, so they're screwed in uh, from both ends. Um, the only issue I had was that I was planning on putting um, another washer um, just above the uh, rubber washer here so that the, the metal socket was pushing down onto the washer and then down onto the um, the rubber washer, but unfortunately the thread uh, length on the the uh, piece coming from underneath um, was too short, so um, I've had to go with this option, but it seems to be working, it's um, obviously not ideal, and I will look to change that, maybe get a thinner or a, a more suitable rubber washer um, next time. But yeah, it's holding um, pressure, um, what's well, sitting on just under 6 psi, so with the priming sugar, I got about um, two and a half uh, psi of pressure initially. Um, that was from the 40 grams of sugar. And then what I've decided to do is I've just been topping it up with um, pressure um, up to six psi, which is sort of the maximum for the plastic um, uh, pressure barrels. 
So yeah, I've done that, and it does tend to slowly go down. Now I don't think I've got a leak. I think what's happening is I'm I'm topping up the pressure, sorry, topping up the CO2 uh, in the top up to six psi, and I think as the CS CO2 is getting absorbed into the beer, um, obviously the pressure is going down overall in the barrel, so the pressure drops very slowly. But what I've noticed is as I inject a bit more CO2 each time it drops less and less. So I guess that the this liquid is um, reaching the point where it's absorbed as much CO2 as it can. So yeah, that's it. I'm very happy with that. Um, like I say, the only thing I want to change is um, change the washer on here so I can get a thinner one. I can get ones um, like for the normal plastic um, pressure barrels, they're a lot thinner and I think they'll do a better job of sealing as well. So, And the other thing I've done is I've ordered a couple of um, the S30 valves online that have the built-in um, pressure relief valve. So at the moment there's no way for pressure to get out which is another good reason to have the pressure gauge on and uh, I've actually found it really useful I know exactly what's happening in, the, in here I know how much pressure is remaining I know when to top it up with CO2 so no, I'm, I'm stoked with that So that's the uh, pressure barrel um, upgraded I guess you'd call it uh, call it pressure barrel 2.0 um, sorry for waffling on a bit, um, I got a bit excited when I um, uh, managed to get the pressure gauge attached. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, I was going to do a pour but it's only been in the mini barrel, the beer, for five days. So what I thought I might do is, um, it's Easter Friday coming up, so that'll be a week in the barrel. What I'll do is I'll put the whole thing in the fridge and I'll, I'll cool it down. And then I'll do a video either Friday or Saturday of me um, pouring a beer off and um, that'll be the first, uh, I guess, test to see how it's really working and um, whether it's carving the beer up properly. Okay guys, um, sorry for dragging the video out a bit longer this week. Um, look forward to watching all your videos and I appreciate all your comments, likes and, um, and new subscribers. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Cheers guys.